Hi there. Welcome to this session. Today, we're going to discuss why we teach what we teach and why we teach the way we teach. Yes, we're going to discuss the scope and sequence of a curriculum. Let's go back to the root of the word curriculum first. It comes from a Latin word, currere, that means run. Hang on, I'm not talking about making the students run. I'm talking it in the context of progress. That is, run forward and not out of the class. Therefore, the word curriculum refers to a course that needs to be run to meet the desired objectives. The connotation of the word goes way beyond only the syllabus. A curriculum is a support system for a student that includes what the learner should learn and how should he learn it. Then finally, he is assessed to check whether the learning outcomes have been met or not. Therefore, the curriculum must include the subject matter, strategies for teaching the subject, experiences of the learner, learner assessments. It's also important for us teachers to understand how the curriculum is constructed and how it progresses to impart knowledge to our learners and to ensure that they go on to shape successful careers as well as become great human beings. There are four major steps involved in curriculum construction. They are number one, formulation of learning objectives. We must know how do we formulate correct learning objectives. Second, creating a range of teaching learning experiences, you know, different kind of experiences. Third, sequencing of teaching learning experiences. And finally, assessing of the learning outcomes that these teaching and learning experiences created. Let us look at them one by one. The first step is formulation of learning objectives. The objectives must be crisp, clear and concise and must state the end result of the course the learners will study must also include the time allotted for each topic and subject and the sequence in which it might be taught. Since the students study various subjects, it is important to balance the duration of each subject to avoid overwhelming the students with information overload. Finally, the depth and the breadth of study must be defined. Second step is the range of teaching learning experiences. Well, there are three kinds of learning experiences included in the curriculum. They are essential skills, desirable skills and additional skills. We as teachers generally talk about them as the must-haves, the should-haves and the could-haves. All we need to do is ask what skill a learner must have, what skill he should have and what skills he could have to get the list of skills that we want to develop in our learners. Simple, isn't it? The third step is sequencing of teaching learning experiences. The following maxims are kept in mind while organizing the learning experiences. Theoretical experiences, guided experiences of practical application and organizing various teaching methods. The final step in curriculum construction is the assessment of learning outcomes. This is a crucial step because it tells you whether the objectives were met or not. So the assessment must be designed to include the purpose of the test, the time, the duration, the frequency and the criteria on which the learners will be evaluated. Now, After the final step, you would have completed an entire journey through a course. You can use these evaluation results to improve your learner's performance and also use them to revise the curriculum for the next academic session. It is important for you to understand how curriculum is constructed so that you can do justice to it. And you know what? You can make a difference there. Create a group of fellow teachers, sit with them, brainstorm and propose changes to the curriculum if you feel like. 